Hey, welcome to another episode of Ego on Break. This time, not the Mississippi Madman, but old All Smiles, Mr. J.D. Jenkins. I'm buckling up because this is going to get crazy. <laughs> He's going to be safe. That's right. So, <laughs> safety, safety first. That's game. right. So today we're going to do a little review on Field Invincible 2. It happened uh, this past Saturday, September 22nd at the Hideaway in Jackson, Mississippi. Give you a rundown of the cards, our thoughts on each match. And uh, some insight on Mr. J.D. Jenkins. He had a big night. and uh, A painful night. A painful night. So let's kick things off. Uh, at Hideaway, we do VIP tickets where you get in 30 minutes early and you get a bonus match. Uh, this time we had a women's match featuring Bristol Hale versus Taylor Ray. Uh, what was your thoughts? Uh, man, Taylor Ray. Uh, very, got the little unicorn thing going. Party princess. I, I dig that party princess. Uh, I think she's got the hots for uh, old lights camera in action. Oh, uh, that's rumored for uh, sure. Rumored. Yeah. Uh, I like rumors. Yeah. Uh, and in your windows. Out the windows. <laughs> <laughs> and rumors out the window. Yeah. Um, and Bristol Hale, she's a very aggressive. Uh, I think Fighter. she's got a. I think she's got a very uh, bright future. Uh, I don't really care for her attitude too much. For sure. Uh, I feel like she can smile a little bit more. She's a pretty young lady, so smile might might help. Uh, well, they call her the White Widow for a reason. Yeah, I'm I'm not really a big fan of spiders, so yeah. it's a horrible <laughs> nickname. Uh, the match was uh, very intense. Uh, the leg drop I thought killed the poor poor Taylor, uh, but did not. She kicked out. Kicked out. Kicked showed out. showed some heart. Uh, yeah, caught into the. Uh, Spider's web, if you will. For the finish, absolutely. So, uh, Bristol Hale got the win. So, yeah, congrats. And both young ladies are fairly new, uh, and I feel like they showed uh, some heart out there. And really, in a sport like this, you got to have minutes, you got to have time playing uh, in order to get better. So, right. I'll, I'll see big upside for both of them. Oh, yeah, me too. I think, you know, over time, they're definitely going to turn into. Two of the top women in the South, so mm -hmm. uh, kudos to both ladies. And then kicking off the main show, we saw a, uh, a tag match. We saw the return of Oblivion, and with him had uh, John Averson, who uh, had a little uh, Apollo Creed thing going on. You stick Apollo Creed in the washer, or the dryer. <laughs> and he comes out, John Averson. <laughs> there you go. You. <laughs> so uh, they took on Prince Apollo and mm -hmm. uh, Randy Reno. And uh, rumor out the window is that was Randy Reno's first ever match. Well, he did a very good job of hiding it, if that's the case. Uh, very, very good job uh, by them. Oblivion always was very entertaining. Uh, crazy. I'd never understand what he's saying. Yeah, uh, I don't speak yabba dabba do. I so. don't either. Um, but if you ever, if you follow the unofficial Oblivion page i believe that's what his page is called on facebook yeah. it has translations which are slightly hilarious yeah. so you need to check that out for sure yeah. slightly rated r as well yeah well sometimes <laughs> uh, one of them was like uh praise allah or something like that and i was like is the oblivion a terrorist we don't <laughs> we don't know who knows and then at one point he's praising god so yeah just, he's, he's, he's uh he's he's multi-religious that's right yeah well read oblivion yeah. is <laughs> the match was good though uh Thought it was very nice, high-paced match. Uh, guys out there working hard. Yep. And uh, Apollo and Reno walked away with the victory. So, not everybody can say they won their first match. So, yep. kudos to uh, Mr. Randy Reno. All right. Then we uh, moving along. We got to see another debut. Chaz Spencer Adams and Lundy. Uh, they were sent by our newest sponsor, uh, the law firm of Adams and McDermott, and. Uh, they said the contract guaranteed them 15 minutes of speaking time. Whew. And uh, Mr. Joshua O'Hagan, I, I think he got tired of listening, so uh, it didn't, didn't necessarily last 15 minutes of speaking time. Yeah, Chaz is not an elegant speaker. Uh, I don't know what, I'm pretty sure he didn't really go to school. But well, that's the reason he has Lundy, you yeah. know, to do yeah. all the thinking. Now, Lundy, I, I kind of like Lundy, but uh, Chaz is a spoiled brat, and I've actually... I've been in a match with him, and uh, it didn't go so well for me before. <laughs> so, so he's got the victory on Mr. Jenkins, huh? Yeah, he does. Uh, and eventually, Chaz, I'm going to beat you up for it. Well, uh, Mr. O'Hagan got a uh, bit of revenge for you as he defeated Chaz Spencer Adams and sent yep. him back to the uh, law firm. 
There you go. So. Apparently, you know, lawyers, can't, that's not a, being a lawyer's son is not a great, you know, base for this business. You've got some people that come in as boxers. Yeah. Some people come in as, uh, have a karate background, yeah. a garage Edo, if you will. Yeah. Some but people lawyers, come in spoiled brat. Just yeah. to, hey. <laughs> Doesn't work. But, uh. I saw some entertaining stuff. Uh, Lundy, uh, poor Lundy, I think. I don't know if, you know, being the personal assistant of Chad Spencer Adams is an upgrade from being the head of the mailroom. But, uh, <laughs> well, I mean, it's more exposure. I guess uh, so. And Get I'm, I'm just curious, so what's all on the fanny pack? Well, we know it had a chain in it. Yeah, he's got chains, he's got juice boxes, he's got just everything Chaz needs. And kind of wish I had a Lundy. <laughs> It could be, uh, what's the old movie, um, the Disney movie, Mary Poppins, where yeah. she's got the bag and you yeah, just keep on pulling never out. Ends. Yeah, that, that could be the way the uh, fanny pack is. It's just a magical fanny yeah. pack. If he sticks his arm like all the way down up to his shoulder, then you know, hey, that, that fanny pack got the strength in it. hips of that guy to carry that thing around. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, I seen uh, it's from all those uh, air squats he does with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, shout out to uh, Oblivion and his That's air right. squats. <laughs> Speaking of the a thousand jaw jockers, it amazes me. Like, how does your jaw not shatter? You have to watch Oblivion. His uh, death by jaw jackers, <laughs> jaw breakers. <laughs> it's the everlasting it's job the, stopper. It's the it everlasting is. jaw breaker. Yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty mm -hmm. cool. Uh, following that, we got um, another tag match, which seemed to be the theme of Feel Invincible was tag team wrestling. Mm -hmm. As uh, not one, not two, but three tag matches. Teddy Long booked the show. I think so. I think so. Uh, I know he's uh, watched at least one match from yeah. Rio, so. <laughs> But uh, the next tag match was for the tag team titles. Yeah. And uh, it featured Lights, Camera, and Action. Mm -hmm. And Hot Tamale, Daniel Perez, better known as Dinner in a Movie. Uh, facing off against the Path of Nightmares. And not talking crap about Dinner in a Movie because I love those guys. But uh, kind of an upset. Oh, absolutely an upset. I think they owe a lot to uh, the mistimed uh, cane shot from Matthias Darkthorn, mm -hmm. which uh, didn't sit very well with the Nightmare. No, Nightmare uh, did not appreciate the losing efforts and um, frustrate, showed his frustrations. Yeah, by attacking Matthias, mm -hmm. which set Eric Silva in attacking Nightmare, and we watched two monsters uh, brawl. So curious to where that if they're going to work that out which or, is entertaining i enjoy to see two monsters kill each other yeah yeah absolutely when you got two big heavy hitters in there mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot better when they hit each other than hit me so i'm yes. always for it so yes <laughs> so that was very good maybe that was dinner in the movies plan all along let's cause trouble from within yeah could be could be it worked yeah it worked it worked for them so uh you would have think that maybe Taylor Ray would have been the distraction, but no, it was Matthias. So who would have thought? She kind of has like the Miss Elizabeth role on the outside, you know, just the, the little smile. I'm here and, for support. Yeah, the moral support, smile and cheer it on. You need that. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely, absolutely. So uh, then we came to a uh, pretty big match for you. We saw the Federated Champion Chance Oren mm -hmm. defend his Federated title against J.D. Jenkins. One of the most hard-hitting matches I have ever been a part of, and I'm not exaggerating, just to, to boost it up. All right, the, if I could show you the inside of my mouth right now, it's all busted up and bloodied. Uh, dude hits really hard, uh, and I could I definitely can see why he is federated champion. Yeah. Uh, I still think I can beat him. Uh, I felt I was very close, but better man won that night. No no excuses. Yeah, I think if you could, I know you went for the Jenkinator several times. Had you, if you were able to land that, I think the outcome might have been different. But kudos to uh, the Federated Champion for studying his opponent, mm -hmm. even though uh, he had that down quick, pat. You know, it mm -hmm. must have been a quick study, uh, as he didn't find out to the beginning of the night. So uh, I have a feeling maybe he went up and uh, looked up the best of J.D. Jenkins on YouTube. Well, and, I mean, uh, got got a quick education. He he kind of figured it was going to go up to a few guys. I mean, uh, between a couple guys, that was going to get that popularity vote i, I mean gotcha. i'm blessed to have the you know the hideaway and pro wrestling ego fans are always behind me so uh, i was confident that they were going to show me some love and they did and i appreciate it absolutely yeah you got that match strictly by being voted for so 
uh, shows just how uh, popular you are. And he goes, hmm. Wish I would have been around when I was in high school. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wasn't as popular back then. Yeah, no uh, doubt. No doubt. Then we come back. Well, well following your defeat, I can't leave this out. Uh, you and O'Shea Edwards, I think he was a little uh, upset that he didn't get the popular vote. Well, if he and, quit being uh, such a turd in the punch bowl, maybe he, maybe people would like him. Yeah, he definitely came out and uh, attacked you and maybe uh, got his point across that he's not going to sit back and just, uh, you know, let, let people get the matches that he should be having. So The only point that he got across is he's gonna, he can attack a man that's already beaten and, and been through a war. Right. I didn't see him coming uh, when he got in the ring. But I assure you this, next time I see O'Shea, I will be fighting O'Shea. And when, when, when's the next time you're going to see him? Uh, probably November 3rd, but if I see him in the streets, I will fight Punch him there. The face, I will, huh? Next time I see O'Shea, I will be fighting O'Shea. Street Edwards. fights. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, Interesting concept. Everything about him is stupid, from his bandana to the to the rain rain dance necklace he wears to... It's... Ugh. He, he is a he is a nightmare walking. Well, he's a silver tongue devil. Well, he's been looking for a fight for a long time, the big fight, if you will, for a long time, and uh, I don't know if it's going to be a big fight, but it will be a fight. Awesome. So looking forward to that on November third at the Hideaway. All right, that brings us to the next match. Um, again, another debut for Ego, Mr. Omar Amir, with his manager, the OG, the original Guido, Skinny <laughs> Vinny. And Skinny Vinny lives up to being skinny for sure. Very, very uh, brash, uh, aggressive. It's right out the gate. They didn't make any friends. No. They was like, you know what? I'm pretty sure y'all not gonna like us because we talk funny. But I'm gonna make sure of it. You don't <laughs> like us because we talk funny. And they just berated the audience with, uh, let's say, not let. Not very good Sunday school talk, if you yeah, will. Right. Uh, it was definitely uh, Skinny Vinny uh, at his finest, I guess. But uh, his mother would not be proud. Yeah. But but seeing how he brought Mr. Omar from the Bahamas, which was phenomenal. That dude is and, jacked. Uh, like I don't know if they feed him in the Bahamas, but Ooh, I'd like to get a, he like, is eating he a is combo eating. meal of it. You know what I mean? So uh, he probably works out in the sand, and those dudes, man. Phenomenal athlete, you know, I mean, looked like a million bucks. When he walked into the locker room, I thought he was wearing shoulder pads. Really? No lie, I thought Look, he was. Look, LOD is here. Yeah, I thought he had a shoulder pad gimmick, but no, that's actually his body. Yeah, yeah, he's huge. Uh, but hometown uh, guy, Mr. Uh, Joey Abel, the renegade. And I went to Joey before the match. I said, bro, you see that big guy over top. there? You better bring your, uh, your A, a game. game, and he did. It's something about a kick to the face that just uh, sometimes knocks you Yeah, you, you know, out. not how no, how big you are don't really matter until you get kicked in the yeah. face. That, that, that little jumping bicycle kick thing that Joey Abel has perfected is definitely a, uh, a knockout I move. felt it before it hurts a yeah, lot I mean, and, and for the time it takes to pin you you don't know where yeah, it's I mean, at Joey's you wake what? up and his arms Two, are 250 maybe mm -hmm. so I mean you got 250 pounds coming at you in mid -air. and surprisingly fast and uh, agile yeah. yeah athletic I was going to say unathletic but he's opposite of unathletic right I mean for God's sakes when he jumps in the ring does the flip flippity do to enter the ring and he yeah. does it with a water bottle in hand yeah water bottle and then you know throughout the match he takes off more and more clothes you know if he was ever in like an iron man match he'd probably be naked before it was over yeah let's not let's not let's yeah, make let's sure not. that doesn't happen if uh, you're if you're an opponent of joey abel please win or lose before we get to that hour mark <laughs> if you had to take a dive take the dive i would fake an injury <laughs> <laughs> We, we don't want to see Joey Abel naked because for some reason uh, just, he likes to start off fully dressed and, and he up. just and he just strips down as he goes. Uh, yeah, so. I mean that's a that's a good thought if you think about it. You know the because I know I was getting hot in my match. Right. Uh, the lights at the hideaway get hot and they got all the fans in there screaming, getting beaten up. That probably doesn't happen. And they, yeah. then they went to fourth and goal and got the hot wings. So, I yeah. mean, it gets a little hot in there. It does that. But uh, yeah, Joey Abel came out with the victory. Uh, impressive debut nonetheless they would hope to get Omar back uh, mm -hmm. him and Skinny Vinny I'm sure will start more trouble yeah <laughs> for real and then uh, a big grudge match happened after that this is our third tag match and uh, we got to see Ursa Major and Stardust in his officially second match take on 
uh, the cavemen, Alex Graves and Wes Warren. I do not like Stardust, but he makes me laugh. Yeah, yeah, he's um, definitely entertaining. I don't, I, um, I don't like him, uh, but he, he makes me laugh. And when he told, I about spit my drink when he told uh, O'Hagan, "You're not wrestling right." Yeah, well, you bring up O'Hagan, so uh, unfortunately Alex Graves w was injured, or at least we think he was injured. And uh, oh, Joshua O'Hagan subbed in for a injured Alex Graves in the match with West to tag with West Warren. And uh, as you said, or some major, I mean, uh, Sturdust told O'Hagan he wasn't doing it right, which is, uh, you know, it was just wise words coming from the world's greatest wrestler that doesn't wrestle. Uh, but now he has wrestled as he's uh, been in two matches. But what we didn't see coming was uh, Joshua O'Hagan attacking West Warren. And uh, joining sides with Stardust and Ursa Major. Yeah, that was a uh, a swerve to say the least. Uh, I thought, you know, O'Hagan was just out there defending ego and right. defending the hideaway and telling Chaz Spencer Adams to shut up and uh, making the fans happy. And you thought for sure, at least I thought for sure, that he would go down there and help Wes Warren out and against. Uh, Sh I'm calling him Shaky. Yeah. He'll always be Shaky to me. Uh, uh, old Ursa Major Shaky and uh, Stardust. And then all of a sudden the world's now against. Uh, <laughs> As Alex Graves comes in to uh, mm -hmm. theoretically help his partner out, comes in with a chair and attacks Wes Warren. So it was not Wes Warren's night. Man, he As, gets a break. Yeah, you know, two of his closest uh, allies. Attacked him and joined his enemy, Ursa Major Stardust. Mind blowing. Now, now the question is, what is Wes Warren gonna do? He's got four guys now in his like that has the crosshairs all on him. And He's definitely a walking target for sure. And I, I, I've I, I've asked him if he wants help, or and he said, you know, I kind of want to do this alone. Uh, I wanna I wanna handle my business. And he appreciated it. I appreciate the moxie. I appreciate, but yeah, I definitely think he's going to have to get some allies. Mm -hmm. um, and and I'm just curious to how that turns out over the next few months. It's so, just too. Uh, I mean, it's going to be too. There much. could be more cavemen. There may be. I mean, who who knows? I mean, we've only seen the one. Right. But, uh, I mean, I guess technically for the night, O'Hagan was a caveman. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, well, I think I think it was all a big plan all along. I think even. O'Hagan going out to defend the hideaway was all part of the, the all evil plan, the evil plot of Stardust. Of Stardust. You know, uh, he claims to be the world's greatest wrestler that doesn't wrestle, but he is undefeated in pro wrestling ego. Well, that's, that's a lot. That's, Says a lot. You can't deny. It. Yeah, mean, he's Adam Priest, he's Ryan Taylor outsmarted him. Wes Warren, Alex Graves, O'Hagan got to him. Turned two of them against the other. Pretty, pretty big, pretty big effort for that. Very, world, very persuasive that guy is. Yeah. It's uh, got to be something to that stir gate, man. I, I don't know what goes on at the stir gate. I don't know either. But it's something. Uh, I, I was in the back and uh, I was getting dressed or licking my wounds, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And uh, a fellow wrestler was watching it and he said, "What did I just see?" <laughs> that was his. That's all he said. What did What did I just see? And hard to explain, but. Man, those, you can't deny the group is yeah. uh, powerful. and It's de definitely a powerful group. And, you know, I don't know if we saw the, the the end of the Path of Nightmares, but we definitely saw the birth of, you know, the Stargate, I guess. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's interesting. Interesting. For sure. And then that led us to the main event. Our uh, Pride and Styles champion, Mr. O'Shea Edwards, who you don't necessarily see eye to eye with, uh, he went out to the ring and put both titles on the line against the 2018 representative of Florida for the Great Southern Eight, which happens November 3rd, uh, Dax Anthony, and also the 2015 winner representing Louisiana, uh, Christian Blake. Both so, guys uh, are which at any point in time could have won that match. Or, you know, all three, O'Shea, I, although I don't like him, he's a turd in the punch bowl, but uh, very talented to say the least. Uh, and all in all, it was a great competitive match. I was watching... Uh, scouting, uh, but man, th those guys and there, everyone 
or have a very, very bright future Absolutely. and have done great things. Absolutely. So, uh, it was a heck of a match, but uh, O'Shea Edwards walked away with the victory. He got the pin on Christian Blake, uh, beat him with the, um, the catatonic, and uh, or whatever he calls it. That's what Chris Harris called it. But it's the uh, swinging rock bottom. Mm -hmm. Or swinging your He probably calls it the turd and the punch bowl because yeah, that's, be. what, that's what we want to But uh, like it or not, still kicking butt. And I was silently, I was cheering for him because now I get a bonus on November 3rd. Not only do I get to beat the crap out of O'Shea Edwards, I also get to take his shiny little titles away from him. There you go. And claim them as my own. There you go. All right, guys, that's it. November 3rd, Great Southern 8. This has been the results for. Phil Invincible 2. This is the seventh year of the Great Southern 8, so the tradition continues. And then November the 9th, we return to Brewski's in Hattiesburg. November 10th, we debut in Richland, Mississippi at the old Richland High School gym. So super excited about that. And uh, shoot us some messages and tell us what you thought about the uh, Phil Invincible down in the comment section. And uh, till then, later guys.